morning and welcome. Today is Ash Wednesday, which marks the beginning of the season of Lent for the church. You'll notice that we aren't imposing ashes today. COVID has disrupted our practices and shifted our gatherings. And yet we do still gather week after week with a practice that's not always afforded to us as we shuffle about with ashes, the practice of lament. And so we welcome our academic dean, Dr. Joy J. Moore, uh, to, to lead us in our worship today and we prepare our bodies for worship. How long, how long, how much longer must we wait? How long, how long, how much longer must we wait? How long will I feel this deep, deep sense of loss, O oh God, that I'm a forgotten one, abandoned and alone? How long must I suffer this deep grief of soul, this path of pain that fills my days and all my nights? How long will my enemies take advantage of my woe? How long? How long, how long, how much longer must we wait? How We come to you, O oh God, seeking answers to our questions. We come to you, O oh God, because you are the creator. We come looking for a song to sing. We wait for your voice to call us from beyond our fear. We are in great need, O oh God. How long will you forget us? Our life is difficult, and yet you hide your face from us. We are troubled. Day after day, our problems remain. We find no help. How long? How long, how much longer must we wait? How long, how long, how much longer must we wait? You it seems have turned your face away. Turn back, I pray, and answer me. Fill up my eyes with light again before I fall asleep in death. How long will all my foes prevail, rejoicing in my fate? Let this not be the last and final word. Tell me how long how long, how much longer must we wait? How long, how long, how much longer must we wait? 
A reading for Ash Wednesday from the First Testament of Christian Scripture in the book of Joel, reading chapter 2 and what we number verses 1 and 2 and then 12 through 17. In the New Revised Standard Version, we read these words. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is near. A day of darkness and gloom. A day of clouds and thick darkness like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from of old and will be again never after in ages to come. Yet, even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning, rend your hearts, not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the age. Gather the children, even infants, at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priest and the ministers of the Lord weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and don't make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God? Thus far, the word of God, for the people of God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Pray with me this morning as we consider this call to a fast. Lord, let these words of my mouth and the thoughts and meditations of each and every heart hearing my voice be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, for you alone are our rock and redeemer. Amen. Hashtag say something. Somebody ought to. There's an urgency in the words of the prophet. The time has passed for clever cliches and purposeless platitudes and exhausted editorials. Ancient Israel then and the community of faith today require a word that sounds the alarm. This prophet's word is set against a chilling description of crisis in Israel. An unprecedented plague has struck the land, laying waste across the land, depriving the citizens of resources. The destruction is total. It doesn't take long for gladness to fade and the people are left to mourn. In the past, I'd been tempted to read these events as some extended metaphor, but now, like you, I've got a little 2020 hindsight. I don't know about you, but the last few years have caused me to read scripture a bit differently. And if, as Paul wrote, everything written in scripture was given to teach us in order that we might have hope, through the patience and encouragement which the scriptures give us, then it's important to keep in mind that the word of the Lord that comes to us today is again a reminder that God is narrating us into this story. We can't forget this because the text we read 
is a scene in the middle of the story of what God is doing to set the world right. This isn't some secret code to be deciphered by looking at a painting drawn 15 centuries after the fact. And it's not a few moral imperatives for establishing a pseudo-religious world-dominating nation where the rich get richer and the poor get analyzed or accused and exploited. The prophet warns that the day of the Lord is coming and it's not Christmas Eve in front of a fireplace, but more like a pink slip from the main office. This will not be a Shekinah glory causing the angels to sing holy, 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 but the presence that causes the mountains to tremble and the people to fall on our knees and cry, woe is me. Who stands in awe of God? Now, I don't, I don't mean this giddy fascination that we laud on the rich and famous. When was the last time you involuntarily shuddered because you knew, you just knew God was present? Consider this past year. Have you dared to think God is trying to say something. <laughs> no, she did not. No, she did. Don't leave. Don't leave. Don't turn your screen off. Don't, don't leave me now. But what if the only way to get our attention today is the way God captured the attention of the ancient people of God? A day of darkness and gloom. A day of clouds. Thick darkness like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful squad comes armed with an arsenal of agendas and assault weapons and accusations. We want to believe, not in my lifetime, can't say that anymore. We want to say, we aren't like that, can't believe that anymore. Does anyone else see the resemblance? The lectionary leaves out much of the trauma painted in, in chapter 1. Fire devours in from, front of them and behind them a flame burns. Cities looted, set on fire. The capital forcefully occupied as if fascism has an expiration date limited to another century or another geographic region. Before them, the land is like the Garden of Eden, but after them? a desolate wilderness. Okay, no, that's not a King James translation here, but it's a bit of an unmoored reading of joy. The unborn hope a generation of a generation past assassinated just as their descendants dared believe that their ancestors were right to practice justice and offer kindness and seek a beloved community. Nothing escapes them. We all saw it, everyone around the world. They have the appearance of a Hollywood script storming the capital city and staging military assaults, public about their rights to be right. They leap on the tops of the media streams like the crackling of a flame of fire, devouring the stubble, like a powerful army drawn up for the battle, distracting the world from the pains of poverty from the injuries of injustice. And to those who have eyes to see, exposes the hype of holy hypocrisy. I could go on, I won't. The lectionary doesn't, but the prophet does. Truly, the day of the Lord is great, terrible indeed. Who can endure it? Yet, even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with tears, with despair and lament. This is what the lectionary highlights. An abrupt shift from the actions required of the people to the promises made by their God. 
a divine invitation to rend your heart, not your clothing. Did you catch that? God isn't asking for sackcloth and ashes. The rituals of religion, from burnt offerings to ashes, do not automatically make you right before God. God is, God is seeking to be in relationship with you. Now, now let me be clear. This has always been communal, not individual. God is speaking to the people here because the original promise was never about Abraham and Sarah or their son or his tribe. God's intention has always been to bless the nations, all the world. So our actions, especially during this season of Lent, is first and foremost to seek God before we seek one another. Rather than return to the broken normal that was, return to the Lord your God. It's been a long time. But God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love. God tends to be particularly patient with us in just about everything, God seems to be gracious, except when we fail to love one another. God has gone on record for causing the earth to tremble when we've harmed the foreigner, neglect the stranger, forget the elderly, and abandon the children. But God also has gone on record to be a forgiving God. And if we claim to be image bearers of God, children of God, human, then we have that same capacity by God's grace. So somebody had to say something. Now, can I be honest? I've been listening intently to this community as I have to the world's news. And I'm recognizing a deep woundedness here, real pain, honest hurt, a broken community, unacknowledged and therefore unaddressed. If we're paying attention, we read it on the social media from our students. If we listen, we hear it in the sighs of our staff. If we're honest, we see it in the agitation of the faculty. So can I be honest? I've said this to the faculty, but now I say it to the Luther Seminary community. We have no integrity to speak of God's transforming grace if we're not willing to let God transform us. Somebody ought to say something. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify a fast. Call for a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation. And that's, that's what this is about. So concerning this fast, here's an invitation. In this season of separation during the peril of pandemic, we don't cover ourselves with ashes. We don't look dismal, disfiguring our faces in habitual practices, recognized as hypocritical by those outside of the church anyway. Instead, I want to invite the community of Luther Seminary to privately and sincerely seek the transforming grace of Jesus. To name before God, with God, what God already knows about us. It's called confession. So here's the challenge. Will you name before God what makes it difficult, maybe impossible, for you to live and work and worship as a community at Luther Seminary? I'm not, I'm not talking about what you can fix or change. I'm talking about something 
that you might be willing to let the Holy Spirit draw up into you that you can name. Not a person, don't go there, but the pain, the longing, the loss, anger, betrayal, canceled, depressed, empty, failed, hated, ignored, lied to, lied on, neglected, overlooked, pushed aside. You know, you know what your pain is. You know that there is something that makes it hard for you to really and truly mean it when you say this is my community. And and I'm not talking when I talk to the staff and administration and faculty, I'm not talking about the pain that was named in 2012. I'm talking about what goes back before then. Things that we haven't named that are being passed on to current students and new employees. What keeps you from thinking this place can be your place, your community? You need to know I weep at, at this pain as I see it. I weep at the invitation that I've already been given to join in the passive aggression or the favoritism or the protest or the anger or the hatred or the mistrust. And I just have to ask, is it possible that God would show up in this place and transform us? And then I remember it's only possible when we Submit to God and let God do what only God can do in us in order that God can work through us. Now is the acceptable time. Luther, the urgency is not at the White House or on Wall Street. It is the people of God being willing to name with God what God already knows about us. What separates us from God and being righteous is not a denominational RIC statement or an administration ignoring policy. What separates us from God is our own sin. We aren't strong enough to remove it. And we aren't good enough to erase it. But I wonder, are we broken enough to own it? Honest enough to say, I'm stuck. Humble enough to say, I need God. And, and in our brokenness, are we whole enough to accept the responsibility that comes with the privilege of being called by God to be a witness to God's transforming grace in the world? Over the next few days, each of you, student, staff, faculty, administration, everyone will receive an envelope, a plain envelope, and it's thick with another envelope inside of it and instructions. I need you to understand there is nothing identifiable in the envelopes. The colors mean nothing. There is no racialized distinction between the president from the assistant dean, just the diversity of God's color pal palette. Because what I'm asking of you isn't about anyone knowing your particular pain. It's just an awareness that individually we are a community that is broken. We've come a long way to be here, but we have a long way to go. So when you receive your envelope, I ask you to open it and to read the instructions, which will be a longer version of what I'm about to say now. You will receive a little wooden square. It's blank. 
When you receive it, I ask you to finish a prayer that you begin today. A prayer that says, God, I need you and I'm I'm willing to let you show me what's keeping me from joining in this community. A pain, a hurt, a wound. Ask the Spirit to let you have a word for it. One word. We can't fix it all. Let's trust God for one thing. Write that one word when it's when it's clear to you that this is what is breaking in you and this is what you're willing to trust to God. Naming isn't enough. We have to be submissive. And when you when you have that this that you can name and say, I'm willing to give it to you, God, your prayer may simply be this. God, I kind of like this pain. I kind of like the privilege of being broken in this crazy dysfunctional world. But as best as I know myself, I want to serve you. So you've let me name it. I'll give it to you. Write it on that square. Put that square in that envelope that has nothing identifiable on it and return that envelope. Drop that that a stamped envelope in the mail. It will come to the campus and we will pull that square out. We won't know who it came from, but we will know that this entire community has begun to name before God what God already knows about us. And we will put that square together on a plaque to show us what it is that is separating us from coming to the altar as a community. We can't enter the sanctuary right now, so this will give us a visual of what is separating us when we are in the same space. And then, and then continue to pray and say, God, I surrender this to you and I, I yield for you to heal this hurt, remove this pain, mend this brokenness, transform me. And if over the course of these weeks leading up through Lent, you feel God working in you where you can say, I'm not so angry. In fact, I, I'm not carrying that burden anymore. And in fact, I think God showed up. I think God's doing something in me. When you get to that moment, take that second envelope and drop it in the mail. It's just an envelope. And every time we get an envelope, we'll wipe off, we'll black off that pain that was named. So we'll go from a board, a plaque of pain to just ashes, not ashes, a blacked out board. And then we'll allow a description of how God is healing us individually and therefore as a community to be visualized before us. Each week, Jenny and I will have something to say to you. Tomorrow, I'll send up a video that, that is the beginning of sharing with you. The process will be on to remind you each day to pray, to remind you to give God this brokenness and to trust that God can show up in this place the way God did in ancient days. It may be dark right now, but we've come a long way to be here and we can say, God, how long? But we also have to say, God, I'm willing to give this to you. Because Luther, I believe now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. And I promise you, if you lay this burden down, you won't treat people the way you used to. And they won't treat you 
the way they used to. And the work that God does at Luther will be felt in our lives. And the work we do as an institution will not be from our words. It will be from the witness around us. I believe that. And I want you to believe that with me. So I invite you into a fast of the biggest pain that keeps you from being community here. Will you trust God with me? Because somebody has got to say something about what's breaking us up. Amen. At this time, we invite you to unmute your microphones and join us in the bolded response of our prayers. Relying on the promises of God, we cry out for the church, the world, and all in need. O oh God, we lament to you. You call your church to be ministers of reconciliation throughout the world. Inspire your church in its proclamation of the gospel and guide its ministries to build up the body of Christ. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, we lament to you. The sin of white supremacy has fractured communities and lives, benefiting white bodies at the cost of black lives. Accompany us with your grace and call to us all to repentance as we prepare to enter the season of the cross. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our O oh God, we lament to you. We have spent centuries building up our civilization that in turn tears down your creation. Protect mountains and valleys, animals and plants, and direct us to be good stewards of all you have made. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O oh God, we lament to you. We divide ourselves by party lines, villainizing one another and fighting for control instead of fighting against oppression. Direct governments and leaders to work for the well being of all people and raise up advocates to speak and serve on behalf of the downtrodden. Be with the people of Myanmar as a coup threatens democracy and peace. And especially Luther Seminary international students from Myanmar and their families. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Oh God, we lament to you. In the face of a global pandemic, we watch our loved ones suffer. Grant comfort to all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, and support caregivers who attend to all in need. We lift up to you, Agnes, mother of Leon Rodriguez, Donna, mother of Don Alitz, Medina, Cole, Austin, and Colin, and all for whom we pray. Oh God, we give you thanks for Arnie Sorensen, faithful supporter of this sem seminary who has died of pancreatic cancer. We pray for Ruth, their four children, and the whole Sorensen family as they grieve. We remember also C.J. Clark and his family at the sudden death of his mother. Wipe away every tear and uphold them in the promises of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. O oh, faithful God, hear our cries of sorrow and lament that we entrust to you 
through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 How long, how long, how much longer must we wait? How long, how long, how much longer must we But I trust in your unfailing love. My heart is joyful because of your saving help. I will sing to God, who has dealt with me richly. How long, how long, how much longer must we wait? How We trust, O oh God, in your unfailing love. Our hearts rejoice in your salvation, for you are near to those who call upon you. We sing praise to you for your most bounteous gift, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The psalmist cries, a cry we make our own, for we are lost, alone, afraid, and far away from home. The evil lurks within, without, it threatens to destroy the friend cords that make us one that bind our hearts in joy your grace O oh God seems far away will healing ever come our broken lives lie broken still will night give way to dawn can we hope? How can we sing? O oh God, set free our voice to name the sorrows, name the pain that we might yet rejoice. How long, O oh God, the psalmist cries, cry we make our own. Lost alone, the pain, our God will lead us home. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.